provides additional information on the OHOSIS publication learning through assessment and approach towards self-directed learning. Edited by myself and my colleague, Dr. Anisha Libba here today. I'm Elsa Mintz, Director of the Research Unit Self-Directed Learning in the Faculty of Education at the Northwest University. This book is Volume 7 in the NWU Self-Directed Learning Book Series published by IHOSIS. We will share with you the contents of this new publication that is devoted to the discourse of learning through assessment within a self-directed learning environment. It adds to the scholarship of assessment and self-directed learning within a face-to-face -face and online learning environment and focuses on how continuous assessment practices for self-directed learning through which learning within the 21st century can take place. It is important to change the way we think about assessment, not only in higher education institutions, but also in the school context and for assessment practices to be aligned with self-directed learning. Self-directed learning, according to Malcolm Knowles, refers to a process in which students take responsibility for their own learning with or without the assistance of others. During this process, they determine their own learning needs, set their own learning goals accordingly, identify their own learning resources and strategies to obtain the goal and eventually evaluate if they have achieved the goal. This process of determining own learning needs, setting of learning goals and evaluating whether learning goals have been achieved can be applied for lifetime. Now, more than ever, it is clear that we need to equip learners with skills to be able to succeed in this rapidly changing world where knowledge quickly become obsolete and where mere memorizing information will not necessarily equip learners for the necessary skills for the 21st century, the fourth industrial revolution and life after COVID. David Collins argues that if assessment tasks are not designed to encourage or promote self-directed learning through participative assessment practices, like collaboration, peer feedback, and student self-evaluation, then students may choose passive approaches to learning, which will not equip them for life. In the first volume of the NWU Self-Directed Learning book series, we focus on self-directed learning for the 21st century and its implications for higher education. And in this volume, we more specifically focus on learning through assessment within a self-directed learning environment. Since assessment drives students' learning, this book acknowledges and emphasizes the role of assessment as a pedagogical tool to foster not only students' content and approaches to learning, but self-directed learning as well. The way in which higher education conceptualizes teaching, learning, and assessment has been in inevitably changed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, more than ever, we need learners to be self-directed in their learning. Assessment plays a key role in learning and therefore we must identify innovative ways in which learning can be assessed and which are likely to become the new norm even after the pandemic has been brought under control. Self-directed learning oriented assessment implies a need for assessments that are participative in nature, hence involving cooperation as well as peer feedback and self-assessment. The goal of this book is to assist with the paradigm shift regarding the purpose of assessment, as well as providing new ideas on assessment strategies, methods and tools appropriate to foster self-directed learning in all modes of delivery. This book advocates that in order for assessment to enhance self-directed learning, the focus should be on the learning process and progress of students as opposed to merely measuring students' learning. Therefore, the role of self and peer assessment, as well as dialogic feedback, is central to the development of self-directed learning-oriented assessment practices. My co-editor will now elaborate further 
on the contents of the book. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Alston. I am Anisha Leber, Senior Lecturer and Researcher in the Research Unit South Directed Learning. The 10 chapters, although eclectic in approach, contribute to the broader knowledge base in the field of assessment and South Directed Learning. The first chapter sets the scene by providing a framework for South Directed Learning oriented assessment and assessment literacy as essential components of learning in the 21st century. Within the 21st century higher education context, Assessment practices should not only engage students in the learning process and their progress, but also support the development of self-directed learning skills. The focus should rather be on the learning processes of students, as opposed to the assessment practices, and therefore assessment should be utilized as a pedagogical tool. This chapter explains the rationale for the emphasis on self-directed learning when studying the role of assessment in learning and presents practical guidelines in terms of requirements for assessment towards self-directed learning, as well as the assessment literacies required for effective self-directed learning through assessment. A mind map of general assessment nomenclature provided in this chapter will guide the reader throughout the rest of the book. The chapter also emphasizes the importance of assessment literate educators who have a sound knowledge of assessment nomenclature and functions also of planning assessment with learning in mind, and who have a sound knowledge of various assessment tools with a clear understanding of the importance of feedback to students and to acknowledge the role of peer and self-assessment methods within a social constructivist learning environment. Within the 21st century, assessment theory and practice should be beyond simply being the glue which holds the teaching and learning processes together to being the conductor through which teaching and learning takes place for students as self-directed learners to become co-constructors of their own knowledge and their own assessment. Chapter 2 emphasizes the importance of context for self-directed learning when exploring situated self-directed learning oriented assessment, the need to consider its social context and how language should be used to support this. The practices regarding the language of assessment within selected university modules are explored and a progressively individualized conceptual theoretical framework to understand assessment as tool for self-directed learning is proposed. It is recommended that learners should be included in the process of planning, structuring and execution of assessment to enhance situated self-directed learning oriented assessment. With the rapid move to online learning as backdrop, the following three chapters position self-directed learning and assessment within the online environment. Chapter three is a conceptual chapter which explores the scholarship around self-directed multimodal assessment and addresses the issue of an increasing need to move away from monomodality. Assessment is approached as self-directed learning oriented assessment and emphasizes formative assessment that fosters self-directed learning. Self-directed multimodal assessment was explored as a phenomenon that should be considered in a digital and increasingly multimodal educational context, which implies a more nuanced and diverse approach to the modes of communication involved in assessment. Self-directed learning oriented assessment and student agency are highlighted as central aspects to any implementation of self-directed multimodal assessment. This chapter also presents a framework for self-directed multimodal assessment and recommendations are made for its equitable and differentiated implementation. In chapter four, the interconnections between meta-literacy and self-directed learning are explored and made explicit. As a holistic model, not only is meta-literacy with the emphasis on information related knowledge attainment discussed, but self-directed learning is also viewed through the lens of meta-literacy. Assessment methods within self-directed learning, which are most appropriate for determining, for determining progress towards meta-literacy are indicated. The chapter also provides two examples of how the intersection of meta-literacy, self-directed learning, assessment as and for learning might be addressed in practice. Chapter 5 advances to establishment of an online tutoring system. 
integrating several state-of-the-art online education systems geared towards assisting the students to become more self-directed in their learning <clears throat> and raising their self-efficacy through integrated epsitive assessments. The authors of this chapter propose a virtual system which is a unique interactive and adaptive system. This system is a combination of the advantages of both online collaboration and traditional classroom environments and is designed to grow with the needs of the participating students. With integrated epsitive feedback, students can monitor their own learning and enhance their metacognition, which will enhance their self-directed learning. Assessment as an epistemological tool to facilitate metacognitive awareness and to promote self-directed learning is the focus of chapter six. This chapter offers a philosophical analysis of the concepts of assessment and metacognitive awareness in the light of the theory of an epistemological of um, engagement. A framework is offered that can serve as a model for exploring metacognition and self-directed learning in assessment practices. And it is recommended that assessment practices concentrate on facilitating metacognitive awareness. The following four chapters offers empirical investigations into assessment practices. Chapter seven reports on a qualitative interpretivist investigation about the value of assessment feedback during the implementation of a specific cooperative learning method of assessment called the group individual group cooperative learning method of assessment or the GIC method, where assessment feedback was integrated into the social learning environment and where all students were in a position to provide the necessary support and guidance to members of their group in order to reflect and monitor their own learning and adjust their learning process accordingly. Firstly, the method was evaluated in terms of feedback within a sustainable assessment perspective. Sustainable assessment can be seen as providing students with the necessary tools to self-assess their learning progress and to reflect on feedback from their peers. When planning for sustainable assessment, strategies should be established to engage students in deep learning and higher order cognitive skills. Opportunities for self-evaluation and peer evaluation, reflection on results and planning for future improvement should also be included. When measuring the principles of sustainable assessment and successful feedback against the GIG cooperative method, it is clear that the principles of sustainable assessment can be accomplished provided that careful instructional planning by the educator takes place and that students adhere to the preparation guidelines. The perceptions of both educator and students regarding the value of assessment feedback during the implementation of this cooperative learning method were also discussed. The results showed that feedback forms an integral part of the learning process during the implementation of this method. Since students provide and receive feedback to their peers immediately after the assessment. They thus partake in generating their own feedback. As a result, both educator and students experience peer feedback during this method as predominantly positive and in support of their learning and motivation for learning. Chapter 8 critically explores the English for Education teaching, learning and, and assessment practices of a selected institution to establish how teaching, learning and the curriculum can be structured to enhance quality assessment, as well as self-directed learning. Four characteristics of quality assessment were highlighted. Effective feedback, a variety of innovative assessment tasks, critical thinking and problem solving, and the integration of topics and their relevance. Guidelines for employing these characteristics to enhance self-directed learning, as well as guidelines when creating assessment opportunities were elaborated upon. A variety of assessment tasks and assessment that encourages critical thinking and problem solving are discussed as components that enhance quality assessment and self-directed learning. The guidelines provided could be used to assist lecturers with the development of quality assessment opportunities for the purpose of developing self-directedness in their students. In Chapter 9, the consequences of online marking and feedback in a school-wide community of practice project utilising teaching strategies for the development of self-directed learning are explored. With regard to the influence of online feedback on student self-directed learning, 
some students stated that the feedback assisted them to avoid mistakes in future assignments, while others stated that online assessment and feedback was more challenging to them and they scored lower than in a face-to-face -face session. Several students felt that the feedback was clearer and more detailed than it was during face-to-face -face sessions. The lecturers experienced the use of online marking and feedback as challenging but useful. Some even claimed that it is more valuable compared to feedback in face-to-face -face sessions. With sufficient practice and support, the future looks promising for online feedback. As the responses from students indicate positive trends with regards to the quality of feedback they received. The authors argued that the paradigm shift towards online feedback is in the best interest of developing self-directed learning. The last chapter bridges the gap between schooling and higher education by reporting on qualitative research utilizing cultural historical activity theory as a research lens and aimed at understanding the influence of teachers' assessment beliefs on their learners' self-directed learning behavior. Data analysis revealed that teachers' assessment beliefs tend to be more focused on improving teaching and learning and learner accountability, and less on teacher accountability and relevance to teaching and learning. Furthermore, findings revealed that learners' self-directed learning behaviors are positively influenced by teachers' beliefs that assessment improves teaching and learning. As a result, this chapter advocates for higher education to include more structured programs for teachers that would support them in becoming cognizant of their assessment beliefs and changing negative beliefs that work against appropriate learner developmental needs. Thank you, Dr. Libba. In conclusion, this book emphasizes the key role of assessment within learning to support and enhance students' self-directed learning, as well as how participative assessment practices should be implemented within a face-to-face -face and online environment. Leaders will benefit from both theoretical and empirical methodologies applied in the different chapters since it covers a wide range of foci connected to assessment and self-directed learning. This collection aims to present the important role which assessment plays in the development of much needed self-directed learning skills in order to thri thrive in the 21st century and beyond. Thank you.